Greetings and welcome back to our virtual learning. Today we are going to study Alfred Lord Tennyson's The Eagle. It is really a short poem, but it conveys a very complex meaning. Now we are going to read uh, Tennyson's little poem called The Eagle, but before we start reading this poem, let's do some biography information. You know, it is a well-known fact that each writer or poet is under the influence of his environment and society in which he lives, especially the first years of his life. Alfred Lord Tennyson was brought up in the salubrious environment at Somersby. It's a really mm, quiet village in England. And he had a plethora of opportunities for being close to nature. Therefore, you can find, uh, let me say, the beautiful image of nature in his poems, in his poetry, repeatedly. Well, uh, many critics believe that he had a desire to imitate the old English poets. And they consider Tennyson as the successor to the great generation of poets which is now passing away. By and large, in his domestic poetry, Tennyson portrays English nature and landscape, the monarchy, medievalism, and the English empire in 19th century. As you may know that, in 19th century, Queen Victoria entitled him as a poet laureate. So, Alfred Lord Tennyson became the public voice of English poetry and he remained popular for many years. In the first line, the words clasps crack, crooked. The consonant C is repeated in these words, and the sound device that is used in this line is called alliteration. Alliteration means the repetition of initial letters, in fact the consonant, yes, the consonant initial letters of the words in the line, in the poem. Uh, but this is the question, why does the poet use this alliteration? What does the repetition of the consonant C conjure up? Well, you can say that the repetition of the uh, consonant C, the repetition of the K sound in this line, uh, can conjure up the, the eagle's hard and difficult life. This sound... Uh, in fact, um, it, uh, it is a harsh tone, you know, the repetition of the K sound in this line is a harsh tone. Then we have the crooked hands. Uh, crooked, you know that it means bent up and... Uh, pay attention uh, to these words, crooked hands. Crooked, you, you know that it, uh, it means bent. And hands. Uh, this is very strange for us. Why does the poet use the word hands for the eagle instead of the claws? Uh, the figure of speech used in this line is called personification. Personification means that the poet gives human characteristics to, for example, an animal. Uh, so, the poet personified the eagle in this line. But uh, the, the main question is, why does he use this personification? But uh, why does the poet use this personification? Why does the poet personify the eagle? Why does he give all of the characteristics of the human beings to the eagle? Uh, because uh, um, this poem is not a study of an animal or its habitat and its surrounding rather it is symbolically talking about human beings we can say that eagle in this poem refers to an elderly person uh, 
In the second line, close to the sun, the poet has two aims, two goals, to use this phrase, close to the sun. Uh, the first goal is that he wants to use hyperbole. He wants to exaggerate how high up in the air uh, the eagle can fly. The, the, the eagle can fly near the sun. So it shows the majesty of the eagle. It shows how powerful the eagle is. Um, it shows that uh, the eagle is uh, totally mighty and it is more powerful than other birds. But the second goal is that the poet wants to refer uh, to a very famous myth, the myth of Icarus. So, the figure of a speech in this line is called illusion. Illusion means that you refer, I mean the poet or the writer refers to another text, to another event or to another person in his poem. So about the myth of Icarus, Icarus and his father, Deadless, they were imprisoned in a jail and they decided to escape from this jail. But how? Uh, they made wings out of wax and feathers uh, and they escaped from the jail but Icarus became too ambitious and he flew close to the sun and you know what happened then you can guess what happened then the wax melted and um, he lost his wings he fell into the sea and drowned The third line, ringed with the azure world, he stands. Uh, the azure world, uh, it is really important for us in, in this line. Why? Because uh, it refers to two notions, to two points. The first one is the ancient notion about the earth, that in, in the ancient time, people believed that the earth is surrounded by... Uh, a series of spheres and uh, the second one is the modern notion uh, uh, you know that you all know that in the modern science we are told that the earth is surrounded by the atmosphere so considering this point azure world uh, can uh, can convey two meanings. The first one is the uh, literal meaning, the dictionary meaning, that uh, it refers to the blue sky, to the clear sky, to the unclouded sky. And the second meaning, uh, uh, I mean, uh, in fact, the figurative meaning, uh, can refer to uh, a sense of restriction, a sense of limitation, or a sense of confinement. Uh, especially the word ringed. Uh, ringed means that the eagle is surrounded, the eagle is trapped uh, in this world. So, the eagle is imprisoned in this world and it is limited. Uh, so, we can say that the poet wants to say that uh, a high... Um, a spirit, a very intellectual spirit, a very mighty or powerful spirit can be uh, trapped, can be imprisoned in a very weak body, in a very fragile body. And you can find this idea, you can find this theme in, men, in Tennyson's poem uh, repeatedly. The next stanza starts with this line, the wrinkled sea beneath him crawls. Pay attention to these two words, wrinkled and crawls. Both of them associate with the old age. They refer to the old age. It means that the sea is old, the sea is aged, and it is decrepit. Uh, 
So through this line, the poet wants to convey this idea that the things of the earth are more vulnerable and they are in imminent danger of dying and decaying. Um, Line 5. He watches from his mountain walls. The eagle watches from his mountain walls. So, uh, what is the eagle watching? Maybe he is watching his prey. Maybe he is going to attack his uh, prey. From his mountain walls. Mountain walls uh, can be the symbol of the restriction and limitation. Uh, it means that the, these walls limit and restrain the eagle uh, and in the last line we are told that unlike a thunderbolt he falls so the eagle does not fall deliberately uh, the, the eagle fell maybe uh, because of his illness maybe because uh, he was um, uh, old maybe uh, because uh, uh, he was the victim of decay so he fell and you can see that this is a very uh, harrowing end very um, threatening end uh, for a mighty creature the eagle is mighty is powerful and uh, it is the end for a mighty eagle he fell so we can say that the line conveys this idea that no matter how uh, mighty you are, no matter how powerful you are, um, you, you fall, you will fall in the end.